Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of BA Select Start Base. There it is. It's been a while since we've come to you with an episode for BA Select Start, but we are finally back. We're finally back in person Very after true. uh doing uh the better part of the uh, the series over phone calls. Yes. <laughs> but um no, we are back and uh Dan, how you doing? I'm doing all right. I'm doing okay. Well, uh, with that, um, since we are back, since the last time that we dove into a WWE-related episode for the 2K series, uh, I know last time we were going through that list of most wanted features that Patrick Gilmore had kind of yeah. asked for. and But since then, it, uh, at WrestleMania, actually, we got a teaser trailer for WWE 2K22, which is now confirmed to be the name. A very brief teaser trailer yeah um which I, I guess we will talk about that in just one second the fact that all the information has been very brief and very surface level and nothing yeah. really in depth but upon seeing that teaser trailer where we see Rey mysterio in the ring and 619 ing cesaro and you get the the slogan where it says it hits different what are your initial thoughts about that um well uh it it better uh i guess it's the first thought <laughs> Um, well, this, it better work. That, well, that's that's first and foremost. Yeah, it better better hit different for the better. Yeah. Because if 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 we get in there, I swear to God, if I get into the first cutscene of career mode and my hair is flying all over the goddamn place again, we're gonna have some problems. Um, I guess my so so yeah, we'll recap that that just a little bit. So basically, the teaser. First of all, they my my first impression of that teaser. Is that they put in a lot of effort to make the actual person look really cool? Because you've got Ray and he's backlit and he's got the close up of the, the like green contact yeah. lenses and it looks amazing. Like it's really really nice from a cinematic or from a cinemat the cinematography standpoint. Yes. Um, but then you go into the game and it's just sort of it's just sort of the game, <laughs> and like the game itself has never really been stellar. Like I can't, I can't think of any of any of the wrestling games that have ever blown me away graphics wise. It's mostly in in retrospect. Like you get, like can you think of one now? Like that you think back at right now and you still go, man, those graphics were amazing. And I'm not talking like looking at the difference between No Mercy to SmackDown. <laughs> no, of course not. Where you go, yeah, they really got into like 3D. <laughs> But they're like they've always just kind of been in the same general wheelhouse, and they look okay. Some of the games less than others, but I think we've talked about this before. I've never had a real problem with the graphics. Like it hasn't been one of those things where when I see the teaser trailer, oh, you know, the lighting there could be just a little bit. Like no, I really yeah. don't care. Like does the game work from a mechanical standpoint? Does everything function? Okay, I'm good to go. Uh, like I hate to say it, but I feel like a lot of people nitpick about the graphics. Well, yeah. well, they could have done a better job, and it's like, if you if you play a wrestling game for the graphics, I really question your motives. <laughs> if you're playing an Uncharted or a Last of Us or a whatever, and you want to talk about the graphics, go right ahead. Yeah. But if you're playing a wrestling game and you are in it for the graphics, then you got like, some like that's your biggest selling yeah. Point. Um, I, I think it definitely helps. I agree. Um, cause there've been a couple where, uh, the gameplay experience is less than, um, impressive as well. Yeah. Um, like gameplay wise, honestly, I know, well, I know you and I uh, have talked ad nauseum about 20. Yeah. I didn't so much mind the overall like gameplay of 20 outside of, you know, the obvious, the glitches, the the mishaps, that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, in that regard, as far as the graphics go, I I'll, I'll mention that this real quick on twenty. Obviously, one of the the chief critiques, not chief critiques, but in general, one of the critiques was that whenever you were going through like your superstar, um, select screen, or you went into like universe or whatever, wherever the hell it is that you like can change your rosters and stuff yeah you had those kind of uh derpy looking 
Renders? Renders. Yeah. Or they're all staring off this way, and I don't know if it was just the way that they had the eyes set up in the sculpts or what, but they all looked cross-eyed. Some of them, like Randy Savage, you're looking at going, what in the hell is this? Yeah. Um, is that, is that, is that, that's not Randy Savage, that's Ra- Randy from the McDonald's. Um, was it you that I sent that render to and, like, you just didn't know who that was? <laughs> probably. I think so, because I, I straight up, I would, c- couldn't look at that thing and tell you it was Randy Savage if I didn't know that it was. Um, but, on the flip side, right before we got on here, I was talking about that one shot of Ray on the, on the on the the stage by the titan trump yeah. yeah and i said if you gave me the cut scenes in career mode and those were the camera angles and the lighting on it and like the they put in and and we've talked about make the game functional make the game competent yeah. and uh that should be the main priority yeah but once you've done that if then you've done if, that then then if you want to go in and you want to give me career mode, and that that's how you want to stage it. The, those kind of superhero angles of looking up at, at your yeah. superstar with the nice shadows on the face. And I know those are always like the those are the impressive renders, and then it never quite lives up to it. But if that's how the cutscenes in career mode looked, oh man, the, the, it would it would look amazing. Well, if it's any consolation, I know that some people pointed out that there are certain shots where it's showing. Uh, like the model, yeah. uh, like doing the entrance motion because they showcase a few of the entrance motions. Of yeah, the, one, of, one of the teaser videos yeah. on, the ch- on their uh, Instagram page. And yeah, stuff. and some people actually brought up the fact that we're kind of getting handheld, sort of semi shaky angles as the superstar is like as the camera is following the superstar. Yeah. So if it's any consolation, maybe they're trying to give that more realistic TV program type of feel as opposed to the default smooth track shot where you see the superstar going down the stage. Yeah, which I, I yeah, that might, honestly, I, I, it's not something that I think you generally focus on, but I think it's one of those things that if you, get, if you see the difference, uh, it, it could make a big uh, impact on your overall impression of it. Yeah. Because it's the same thing with with shooting like shooting a movie. Yeah. If you have a static shot, then you're gonna look at it and go, "This is boring. What the hell's going on here?" And it's kind of the same. I mean, I know you're getting motion following Bobby Lashley to the ring, but if it's just real fluid, yeah. you're kind of like, "All right, whatever." <laughs> There's not much character in it, as opposed to. The handheld shot where the guy's taking the steps and there's a little bit of bounce and you, you the the shift where right. I don't I don't even think you get that a lot like they'll do the cutaway and then they'll come back to the different angle as opposed to where the guy is walking alongside them and then he does that like like I said superhero shot where yeah. he dips down and then you get the fireworks in the background right yeah those will be those those are the those nice touches that again should be sort of the after afterthought versus functionality right but could make a world of difference in the long term of like really cool stuff because what what like I'll, I'll let you pick one but what what's one of the most um iconic visuals that you can um, that you can imagine in the last we'll say seven years because for me one of the coolest moments is seth at 31 yeah cashing in yeah yeah 31 when he cashes in he's on the stage and he spins the belt yeah. and then you've got that upward angle and all the fireworks are along the top right yeah and that it's it looks cool it's iconic and you you almost never get something of that same caliber out of the games it's all very cookie cutter yeah but do you, do you have a specific one that comes to mind? Hearing, it's it's going to be cliche, but Daniel Bryan with the two right. titles, fireworks going off him on the announce table, yesing. Yeah. Um, it's the, yeah. those human moments, those things that really like bring bring it out. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, so I guess overall visual presentation is going to have to be top notch, or, or at least we hope, you know, with lighting. And, and to be very honest, if this becomes secondary stuff on their list, uh, it's not a deal breaker for me. Like, oh, they didn't put a more realistic camera angle in there. Oh, yeah. this game is going to get a few. Like, if, no. If, if that's something we have to wait till 23 for, so be it. Yeah, not a deal breaker. Because if you go from the uh, cluster of 20. And then you 
uh, backpedal and you give us a functional game that's like okay, like it's oh, it looks okay. Yeah. But the gameplay is awesome. Yeah. Then, then at that point you can go great. We've got a and we we talked about that during our our whole series is once you have a nice skeleton, mm-hmm. you can build on it. You should never like the the game plan never should be and never should have been uh, to make sort of like like instead of a full like a full skeleton, it was like they were cool with having some legs. Yeah, and like it, oh, look, there's there's it walks, it moves. Yeah, we're good. That's all. That's all we need. But then you, the one of the feet falls off those legs, and now your whole thing's derailed, which is what we got with twenty. Exactly. Um, but if you if you build a sturdy skeleton. Then you can follow that up with putting on the muscle tissue, and then you can add on the skin from there, and then the hair, and the hair. it just gets better and better, better, and better. over, the, over yep. the years. But it always seemed, or for a long time, it's felt like it was sort of a lackluster, lazy ass attempt of putting out a, a wrestling game where they were like, "All right, well, we did it. <laughs> they they can play it for another year." Yeah, and then and then twenty was the the breaking point, which is why twenty one didn't happen. Well, we did get Battlegrounds. I didn't play that, did you? I, I, I did not either. <laughs> but one comment that I will make is that, you know, and I guess this kind of ties in with all the releases that we've gotten recently. Yeah. Which I don't know how that's going to impact the game. Yeah. Because who's to say maybe you had a, a Braun Strowman in a career mode and now that Braun Strowman Jeez, is released, yeah. you are kind of back to... But then that, again, there that's ha- probably why you've got seven people confirmed for the game. <laughs> <laughs> but in all fairness, there have been moments in the past where a certain superstar was released, but because they play such a major part, they were left in the game, yeah. such as a CM Punk. But my point about Battlegrounds, one thing that they did do was that the, the roster is stacked in that game. Yeah. Like, it is stacked. You have people like Yokozuna in there, you know, all sorts of people in there. And in my mind, I'm thinking, well, if we can get that big of a roster on a Battlegrounds, why can't we get it on the on the main franchise? Because for 20, we had so many cuts, uh, like people like Brutus Beefcake, uh, Jake Roberts, Bam Bam Bigelow, DDP. All these people were just unceremoniously just cut out of the game. Yeah. And I get it that, yes, you do have to make room for the NXT guys and the new guys and whatever. But I don't really think, like, you should have, like, a space issues, like, storage issues with roster. Um, I mean, I don't know. What do you think? Um, real quick, I was looking it up. You had 70 main superstars and legends and 60 DLCs. On Battlegrounds. And for the record, none of them were duplicates. Yeah. Like, it was different superstars, so... And I was trying to see what what were some of the, like, weird ones were. So, like, you had uh, Rob Gronkowski in there as Gronkster. Uh, Big Boss Man made an appearance. Uh, Maurice. Uh, Mr. McMahon. And then uh, a bunch of people who just don't, uh, don't exist anymore. But that's not the point. So... Sorry, recapping. What was the question one more time? Just what do you what do you think? I, I I guess let's dabble into roster for just a second. With all these cutbacks, yeah. like okay, that you have the odd scenario of a Samoa Joe who leaves or gets released, but now he's back on an NXT. Especially so with how major of a role he ended up playing in career mode in twenty? Yeah, exactly. So with robot arm, you, <laughs> you know, we all remember how that that went. <laughs> Look, I I'm I'm not going to I'm not going to shit on that because I knew what they were kind of going for with all those like DLCs and stuff. So they were going with the more fantastical thing. So I'm not going to like bash on that too heavily. But um as far as roster goes, yeah, we've got about seven people uh so far uh, as we talked about. And it was The Miz, Ric Flair, Booker T, Bailey, Bobby Lashley, Lashley Miz. and Ray and Ray. Cesaro. Yeah. Um which none of those names are exactly a shocker, yeah. like you expect. Uh, yeah, those are kind of your staples. Not not your staples, but there's like staple figures at this point. Sands maybe Booker T. Yeah, because uh, I think he I think he's been in the last couple games. In those he, last he has few, like yeah. Legends yeah, yeah. contract, but um, yeah, the the cuts have been surprising as of late because yeah. that. 
th- like it thinned out a lot of your your B talent. So the jobbers essentially. Yeah, and just like just from a, which, which I guess well we should address that a little bit because this isn't AWP. Yeah. Um, Braun Strowman, Alistair Black, the Iconics, um, Ruby Riot, Ruby Lana, uh, Lana, a bunch of like. Mid, main mid to up, upper caliber mid yeah. characters yeah. who were either like some fan favorites like people liked Alistair Alistair was a big one in 20 like he had two or three of those weird fantasy characters yeah. in uh, the middle of a push by the way yeah and the the and like I know now we're steering away from the game itself but then then you have WWE kind of backpedal and say oh maybe we should bring him back <laughs> but it sounds like now he's kind of like no nah, you guys can uh, go to hell yeah um, which go for it, dude. Like say Whatever makes you happy. Yeah. Don't don't stick with them just because. Like the payday is probably great, but you you can't sacrifice your, your happiness. But that not that's neither here nor there. Um you you now have like now they what, are they gonna d- dive into legends even more heavily because that's what they gotta go for? Well, word on the street is that now you have to heavily rely on your NXT roster. Yeah. Like even if someone is relatively new, like an LA Knight or a Cameron Cameron Grimes. Cameron Grimes, Nash Carter. Uh Rick, the guy Rick who's Rick the North Rick American Rick champion. Uh I don't know. The remember. big guy. Um, sorry, whatever, whatever his name is, but, I'm but drawing a blank. You'll also get, like, and to that point, you'll, you have enough of the, like, those people, like, I was about to bring up Keith Lee, I don't remember if Keith was in 20, but... He was, he was. You, you have a lot of these people that you, yeah, peop, there's enough of a fan following, at least with your, <clears throat> your, like, NXT people, or your, your diehards, that if you gave, if you gave us a game... That was very heavy on NXT superstars. If they were well done, I don't think anybody would complain. Like I don't know, some, like some of them I don't know, but like give me um, uh, Aaliyah, Mer- give uh, me Cam- Mercedes Martinez. Yeah, Mer- yeah. Mercedes. Just the, whoever the new crop of talent. Yeah, you got so so many people, and to carry him. We didn't even talk about Karrion Karrion Cross. Cross, you're an NXT champion. Um, those guys, and you have them real heavy, and then you have your your mainstays, your Rays, your Bookers, your those, those people. You can still get a nice, healthy roster. Yeah. And based on the additional footage, it looks like the face skins will hopefully be better based on the, the, the setup that they're using for those. And then uh, it looks like the people they have doing the moves are competent like yeah. they, the moves look pretty clean we just had the one where they did the little springboard off, off the, the rope ropes into the and then, yeah looks looks like it would be great depending on obviously how the physics of the of the game work because i don't know if it's get this so that that's the general motion once the characters link up or if they like where the actual initiation of the move is uh, if even create a move might be a thing this year if yeah. they bring it back. Um, but yeah, you basically hope that it's not clunky. Yeah. Because you've seen like I I I I don't know how I don't remember how prevalent it was in twenty, but I know it happened in older games, where like sometimes you you'd start a move and the game would glitch out and then the two characters would just sort of collapse on the mat together <laughs> and you're like what the hell just happened? I was hitting the jackhammer. <laughs> um. But hopefully the interface is going to, and that's again a gameplay thing, a logistical thing that they need to prioritize. Hopefully it works well enough to where those moves look as pretty as the actual people actual doing people them. Actual people doing them, yeah. Um, and then the face models just hopefully kind of resemble people. Because I know we talked about it last time. There were a couple of superstars that, didn't like during their entrance, looked perfect. Like I think Murphy was one of them. And then, and then uh, speaking of which, he's gone. Yeah. Um, but like Murphy looked looked like Murphy, and then you had I can't remember anyone else specific like who specifically we had brought up, but then you had some people who just didn't Candice LeRae look right at all. Yeah, she didn't look anything like herself <laughs> at all. Um, so. which is one other thing I was gonna ask you uh, an idea that I kind of brought up because I know you were talking about the face scans and they're scanning a twenty twenty one Ric Flair. Yeah. Um. 
would you be a fan of an idea of like aging superstars as in like if i select a rick flair i can select a 1980s face model rick flair i can select a 1990s face model rick flair i can select a current day rick flair because i think that would be a pretty neat idea like if you really want to like set up a match and you want to make it feel like it's from the 1990s and it's not rick flair all wrinkly up because i brought up this specific example to you where you will have because i know you got this for like 19 you got the biker taker yeah i don't know if you took a very close look at his face it's not a face scan from 2002 it's yeah. current day undertaker with just modifications on the face to look somewhat like the biker version of taker yeah and that would always just aggravate me because in my mind it's like you guys couldn't just grab like yeah. a a picture a 3d action figure something yeah. scan that and have yeah, an actual it was, face because it, it was lazy then yeah but with the the advancement of technology with deep fakes and things mm -hmm. yeah stuff has gotten crazy scary yeah scary actually uh I'll, I'll just, these aren't obviously the best examples but i don't know if you've necessarily seen all these but i'm gonna go real star wars heavy real quick um going to the mandalorian most recently yeah they did a deep fake on an actor of mark hamill as luke skywalker and Mark, Mark is, I don't know exactly how old he is. He probably clo close to 60 now. Mm -hmm. And they t did a face scan of him and then wheeled it back and made him look like he was like 25 again. And sure, it was a little flat. It was a little flat, but it looked like him. Yeah. And the the guys at Corridor Digital did their own version and they, like, they, like they ultimately did a little bit deeper, more, polished more, it a little bit. Yeah, a little yeah. bit. They missed, like, they hit where, like, Lucasfilms missed, and then vice versa. Right. But then you also go back to the Rogue One movie, where they uh, put Peter Cushing's face uh, for Grand Moff Tarkin, and then at the very, very end, you got de aged Carrie Fisher as Princess Leia. You can do those things, like what you're saying, where you take a you take a scan of um, Rick and then you de-age it, or like I mean, if you really want to get weird with it, you can then do, like maybe you you age somebody into the future, like because going be just go into the story from last year, you you start as I can't remember the characters' names, Trey and Red, 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 Red. yeah. yeah. You start as them, and then you get like six years down the road, or something. How how far away before they're in the Hall of Fame? Oh, it's years. Yeah, and you yeah. get like well, for argument's sake, we'll say ten, fifteen years down the yeah. road, and they look exactly the, the same. same. Everybody else looks exactly the same. Yeah, nobody got older, and like if you just kind of deep fake a uh, Samojo to be a little bit older, you put a little gray in his hair, it could be a fun little touch. Um, but then for the record, do not create duplicate superstars. <laughs> I am not suggesting that you give me five Ric Flairs in one game. Continue. <laughs> you're, uh, you're talking like skins, um, for lack of a better term. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, cause then you can do, you can do some weird, weird stuff where you do like 93 year old Ric Flair <laughs> versus, uh. Versus fifty year old Samoa Joe for for argument's sake, yeah, and it'd be weird, but it'd be fun, yeah. <laughs> Just options, I guess. At the end of the day, we talked about this, and I'm very heavy on giving us options. Yeah, we are not just set on on one specific, uh, like type of a character. You're not set on one specific attire. Yeah, you can have multiple. So I would like more customizability to. Uh, to char to character like the default models like we talked about with Bailey for this last one yeah where they they cut her hair like right after the game right came after out. the game and it was like cool can I do that no, no. oh okay <laughs> well because I know you and I were kind of like trading off <laughs> ideas about giving us the option to put like alternative hairstyles on yeah. superstars but apparently it bleeds back over into it being a copyright thing because of the likeliness. But if that's a thing, why don't you give us like specific options for each character? So for example, what if we have face Bailey hair with the ponytail on one side and then you have heel Bailey where you got the, I guess it's being known as the, the Karen haircut. Yeah. 
like what if we have the just those two options like you can swap back and forth and you can either put this hairstyle or that hairstyle so we're not just set on one hairstyle yeah so again options like that's all that i ask for whatever we do whether it's match types superstar renders arenas whatever it is i would love to have options yeah. and not just this and this is all you're getting <laughs> um now that we've covered that, um, what do you think about their advertising technique? Because uh, that teaser trailer, okay, yeah, you see something, but it doesn't really, It's uh, I've said it, it's surface level stuff. Yeah. E3 just passed, radio silence, we have nothing. Uh, presumably this game is coming out in November, which is when it usually comes out. Yeah. So that's just a few coming short soon. months. Yeah, coming soon mm -hmm. type of thing. Um, it's still kind of radio silence. Which is the same problem we ran into with 20. Yeah. Because we got, first of all, we got those first teasers late. And then we were like, okay, cool. What, Where's what the are game? we getting? Yeah. What is, what's going to be in it? And they were like, don't worry about it. It'll be fine. And we were like, no, now I'm, I'm, now I'm worried about it. Um, and as it turns out, we should have been. But, um, no, I think that it's kind of, I'm trying to think, uh, what to compare it to because but it's one of those things where like, don't put the, the cart before the horse Yeah. where if you, if you're going to, if you're going to give me something about the game, you should have something about the game, something of, of substance because you put a lot of effort in, like I said, making Ray look cool, like physical human real ray yeah looks great in that promo that would be cool for like a pay-per-view uh opening yeah but to t like to advertise your game i i'm not i'm not paying to look at real ray mysterio i'm paying to play right. as your game character and if you're gonna, gonna gonna give me a lackluster experience and a lackluster appearance and again again and like bare bones surface level play. stuff yeah because like the 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 benefit the, like the thing that i think that they could take away from 20 and still apply it to this one and it not hurt anything is the uh, what the hell were they called the different downloadable contents i forget the dlc they, they, they were called something specific whatever but they were not the originals yes the yeah. originals the, the they were an opportunity for DLC. Yeah. And so they released them in chunks. And in each one you got different skins. Like you got Mecha Alexa and and stuff like that. And I'm not saying they need to do originals again. But um, updates and new match types and stuff. They don't... They, they, they've never really gone to um, a flexible, uh, organic... Div like evolving game and I think it's because they've always been like alright cool well we're done with this year's now we got next year's so they they, they kind of put on the blinders as soon as they release the game and they just kind of say go to hell <laughs> but I think I likened it to the, the, the NFL games last time too where you get the updates to the rosters yeah so like if DeAndre Hopkins gets traded from I think he's with the Card Cardinals right now maybe I know you don't know um, he gets traded from the Cardinals to the Lions then within the week he's going to be on the Lions yeah. in the game and it should be kind of the same thing if a new match type or a new arena or new attire comes out and I know we talked about the copyright thing I'd like to think that they have a partnership with the company where stuff like that can get okay updated. yeah but uh I don't want a game where I get singles match, tag match, triple threat, fatal four way, steel cage match, uh battle royal and um tables match and that's all that I get. And that's all that I get for the duration of that game because they didn't build other stuff in. I don't want them to ju if they're if they if they need to, I guess this is what I'm getting at. If they need to go more bare bones initially just to stick the landing on the gameplay. They should build in 
patches to implement new stuff as yeah. they go because then you're again telling your telling your fan base and your customer to go to go screw themselves yeah because well we gave you we gave you a good game yeah you gave me a fine game but i'm sick of the triple threat matches yeah <laughs> I'm sick of the triple threat matches with 1991 Triple H and 1947 Ric Flair and 2036 Becky Lynch because apparently we can do intergender matches. But and that rollout feature which I did Oh, you're talking Yeah, you're talking about the recovery thing. Yeah. I hope to God that's Get gone. rid of that, please. That please was, get rid that of that. That's an awful decision. Um well Okay, let me uh, let me make you think about this. We would these guys would usually focus on the game for give or take ten, 10 to twelve months. Yeah, they've had a year and a half. This this time around, they've had a year and a half. Okay, I was gonna say two years, but year and a half. That's fine. What do you think? Where are you with that? Do you think, and especially because, you know, everybody during the lockdown was supposed to work from home and these developers, I'm sure, were in front of a screen. And yeah. Patrick Gilmore, uh, the executive producer, was he? Or like creative producer, whatever the title was, seemed like he was very much like involved and he kept on asking opinions and asking everybody to write their suggestions and what they think that that's great to see that because we usually would never see that all we yeah. would see it like come august september teaser trailer gameplay trailer official gameplay trailer game comes out subpar game yeah um well here's the, here's the, the thing speaking from real world experience sometimes you have people come in they show a lot of promise and then they disappoint you yeah not to not to wish that or like impose that on patrick yeah but I'm not impressed so far. We we really haven't seen anything to be impressed at. Yeah, but I'm saying like with that time, you would think maybe that they would would have had at least a couple more like bright spots in their development process that then they could actually put together a trailer and say, hey, yeah. this is what we're working on. We got Rey Mysterio and Cesaro in a match with three different moves. That's That's what they've shown us so far. That's underwhelming, especially if you're expecting me, if you're expecting me again to spend somewhere between sixty and a hundred and fifty dollars on your game. <laughs> like I'm not like don't don't get me wrong, I'm not I'm not mad about the one that I bought, because I got the 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 cool Ric Flair Funko Pop with the belt. I got the silly ass. Little... Wasn't that the year before? Was it? Was that nineteen? That was nineteen. What the hell was twenty? Are you sure? Yes. I don't know. Either way, I'm not mad about like those expense, the expensive game where you get a bunch of like extra stuff. Oh no, I remember. Uh, Twenty was the three autographs where you would get either Kurt Angle, Edge, or Mysterio, and they were supposed to be autographed, but some of them came without an autograph. And poor Edge had to ask the oh, fans to right. mail it back so you're he right. can autograph right. it and send it back. So That's, there you go. You're, you're right because I I remember that I. Yeah, 19, I still play 19, by the yeah. way. I was playing it earlier today. 19, I still play because it's a full compatible, like, functioning game. Yeah. I really don't have a problem with it. The restrictions is what starts killing it, where you can't do the triple threat matches because of the rollout feature. Yeah. All the create modes that were taken out, all the people that were taken out, that's, that's where the game starts suffering a little bit. But if you take 2K19, you take the skeleton like we talked about, and you paste it over here, and you start putting all the new stuff on it, you're good to go. Yeah. That's it. I mean, there's really not much more to it than that. Yeah. Um. So, here's hoping. Here, here's hoping that, like, they're going to come out with, like, the the real trail. Like, what month are we in? June? June, almost July. Yeah. The la I feel like the last two, two months have just... Whoosh, right by. Yeah. Like, the rest of the year took forever. But, um... I we're in June, about to be July. Big rumor on the street is that for SummerSlam, they're going to like have a big reveal, gameplay reveal. Because and, and that's what I... When is that? Is that September? That's August. That's August. That makes sense, because September is when summer ends. Um, but, okay, so then we're looking two months. Hopefully, they've been hoarding stuff. 
that is actually going to inspire confidence in this game because that teaser trailer is like, okay, great, you've done, you've done a thing. You've literally done one thing. All right. So hopefully, whatever they put out in August, which at that point you're starting to push it again. You got August, September, October, and let's hypothetically go with they re- doing November release again. You got three months. You got three months from the reveal to the game being done. So something in that trailer had better be a selling point. And I'm not talking a pre-order bonus. I don't care. <laughs> I don't. I don't need a, a Jessamine Duke pre-order bonus. <laughs> She's been released. I know. <laughs> Um, I don't need a Brock Lesnar pre-order bonus. I don't need a... Superstars who were released pack. Blue Tista the pre-order bonus. I don't need any of that. I need a, a, a clean, functional, visually impressive uh, game to re- reignite the confidence that we lost. Everybody, everybody lost. I was... It's an uphill battle going into this game. I, I said it in one of our last episodes that this next game will be make or break for yeah. 2K. I truly believe. Because 2K20 just sucked the fun out of everything. And there was even that tweet that I, I read when we were when we were pulling up the stuff just as a refresher where the guy said, hey, if this game is crap, just stop. Yeah. Yeah. Because at that point, then now you... Like, at minimum, again, you're making somebody spend $120... And you're just, you're just disappointing them. Let me just clarify by saying I don't plan on buying this game yeah. until I see the reviews. And I, you know, I, I went with my gut a little bit with 20, even though I saw reviews. And I was like, it can't be that bad. Yeah, the last thing you want out of this <laughs> is another Cyberpunk 2077 debacle. Oh, God, Jesus. <laughs> I've I don't know like I think that's like the the, the trend now yeah. is like hype up a game and get everything in play and then only for it to be a screw up. Well, si- like Cyberpunk had to Cyberpunk had to du- like double back harder than Two K Twenty did, where they like working at an electronic store, they greenlit out of return policies for that game for like a month and a half after the release. And you can't blame them. Yeah. Because people were like, I spent $170 on your gigant, like, I swear to God, the, the, the special box for it was, like, three feet tall. <laughs> and it had a neat statue in it. But, like, you're making people buy a game and then it doesn't work. It looks ugly. Because from what I heard, anything that wasn't on the new, the, the new consoles, on fi- the 5 and the, the, the Series X, yeah, looked like trash. Just looked god awful because the systems themselves couldn't couldn't hold it couldn't handle it. So you designed a game that then overwhelmed the system it was running on. Yeah, I don't know if this is like the new trend or, or what's going on, but one thing I was gonna bring up was, uh, when that official trailer comes out, um, I don't want to see thirty different superstars walking down the ramp. Because yeah. honestly, like that's I you'll see two people walk down the ramp. Then you see a finishing move inside the ring. Yeah. Then we go back to the ramp and there's it's somebody doing their iconic pose. It's like, I don't want to see that because that doesn't tell me anything. You yeah. did that for 2K20 and look what we got. Yeah. Now, if they hit a trailer where it like the first 20 seconds experience the exhibition mode, you show all the features. After that, jump into career mode and then you kind of showcase that. Don't forget to uh, visit the create uh, so and so option. You show all the create modes. Like if you and then have you a trailer, up GM mode right at the end as your major your major hype point. <laughs> if no, if they do that because that was the most requested feature, yeah. you know. So right like before people it fades, lose their minds. Right before, like right when it fades to black, like it comes back on it, and you know you get a, a teaser for a, become a GM. Oh, you know it would be really cool if they went with their silly ass cinematic stuff. If you brought out like Kurt and like Paul. And maybe even Stephanie in like their old like GM, GM suits, suits, and you just have them like backlit as they walk into a hallway, and you're like, "Oh my god, <laughs> it's here after <laughs> ten years." And that like that would be the way that you could you could kind of handle this is that you have you tackle person... each and everything, yeah. yeah. Again, because I don't want to see like X Pac walks down the ramp, Hogan walks down the ramp, Triple yeah. H walks down the ramp. Oh, a Batista bomb in the ring. Okay. Amazing. So, Austin's so, now walking down the ramp. Like, I don't care. I don't so want to see that. 
Um, one last thing that I want to tackle, and yeah. it kind of became the incentive to do this episode. Like it kind of pushed me to kind of do this just to just to see where we are. And I talked to you about this. I was playing two K nineteen a few days ago, uh-huh. and I was playing as two thousand one version Triple H, long haired with the tights. All of a sudden, the victory scene comes on, and I am seeing the nineteen ninety nine posing victory for Triple H of two thousand one. Yeah, and I remembered back to how for two K twenty, for whatever insane reason, um, for those of you like who really like know like what a superstar wears when they come to the ring, you all know Surfer Sting would always wear wrist tape on both wrists, and his like fingers would be taped up, and I remember in two K twenty. Surfer Sting, for whatever insane reason, did not have his wrist tape. It was just the finger tapes, yeah. and that's it. And I thought to myself, I'm like, that's like Austin coming out and not having the knee brace on. Like, the, the look is not complete without that. So one thing that I want to emphasize, 2K, is make sure the superstars are fully complete. Yeah, Don't, Atten- attention to detail. Attention to detail. Don't give me a semi-baked product. Because, again, I repeat... This is make or break for you guys. That's how you get salmonella. (laughs) Is undercooking. Because I have reason to believe that if 2K bombs this game, 2K says goodbye to the series and somebody else is going to pick up the WWE game series. Like, that's honestly where I think this is going. If they fail. And it's still going to, like, it'll still, like, unfortunately, 2K's making it hard for whoever, whoever might have to come after them, too. Because if they drop this game, then people are going to be like, well, the last two WWE... I, I feel like it's difficult for your average consumer yeah. to keep that separate. Like, even once they... If they move over to... I'll just pick THQ. Yeah, that's easy. <laughs> they move over to to, to THQ. Uh, who I don't even know if they're still in business. I don't, I don't think so. But then it works. Hypothetically speaking. Then it works. They move yeah. over to a Jax or a THQ. Or let me go to all the old companies. Um... And they are setting up the game, and then, okay, cool. But those average consumers are going to go, yeah, but the last two WWE games weren't very good. Right. And even if that, even if 20, I mean, it won't be 2K at that point, but even if WWE uh, 23, we'll say, um, comes out, and it's amazing. Like, maybe it's the wrestling game of our dreams. It's going to be real hard to still get those people back in the door initially because they'll be like, I don't know. I mean, yeah, some of the reviews are good, but I, those last two games were awful. Right. It's going to leave that bad taste in everybody's yeah. mouth. It's going to be tough. So uh, really, even with, whether they get to keep the game or not, 2K is going to get their shit together on this one. That's why I said, I mean, again, you haven't had a year. And here's the thing. If they knock 2K22 out of the park, amazing. Uh, I won't say amazing. Functioning, functioning game, great features, everything fits well. I wouldn't mind if we have a bi-yearly release. Yeah. Because if that's what it takes, almost two years for you to put out a great game, I will take the extra year yeah. and I will wait. Even though I know contractually, apparently 2K is obligated to put out a game each and every year. But that, then stagger, like, did, were, were they the ones that, I mean, was... 2K the ones who also put out Battlegrounds or yes then just do new like do new Battlegrounds if you need to do that have two separate teams one who updates Battlegrounds and then spend that two years putting together the, for the, the main new, yep. yeah yeah <laughs> maybe that's even shit maybe that's even the plan like they release Battlegrounds now they're here I guess we'll see if we see a Battlegrounds 2 next year or if we see 2023 20, is the next thing yeah. on the docket but that might be a, a way to give them more time to like actually develop stuff that makes sense and that works yeah exactly so i don't know i i i've been saying it i've been preaching it 2k like if there was ever a time for you to get your stuff together this last year and a half has been your time we haven't seen much we've seen the bare minimum we've seen superficial surface level stuff so i don't know but um, any last comments, Dan? I mean, until we get another teaser, a gameplay, a trailer, a, a, a something, I mean, we're pretty much left with this. And again, rumor on the street is that SummerSlam is going to be the big reveal, if yeah. then. 
because they used to do a press conference and have all this new stuff and they don't do that anymore but it seems like that's around the time where they try to like get the buzz going about the new wrestling game yeah. coming out so i don't know what are your i just got one one question for 2k and that is um why why oh are you making us wait so long to see what you've actually been doing? Is it that bad? Are you nervous? But on the surface, you seem calm and ready to drop bombs, but you keep on forgetting what you wrote down. The whole crowd goes so loud they open their mouths, but the words won't come out. He's choking now. Everybody's joking now. Anyway, so... Blau. Anyway, uh, so I'm, I'm expecting something big from this SummerSlam rumored reveal, and I hope that it lives up to the hype. I hope the best for you guys because this is also separating ourselves from being the, being the fans. This is a, a company that's employing people to make this game. Yeah. And it would suck to know that they dropped the ball so bad that they then had to like essentially unemploy a bunch of people. So I hope I hope this is a turning point for them. So, yeah, I mean, I guess I'm right there with you. Um, 2K, this has been your time. You know, uh, a pandemic has forced everybody to work from home and work individually and, you know, segregate themselves from everybody else. So I don't know how much of an effect that's had on you guys. We've seen other video game companies like a Naughty Dog who almost had the game come out but then had to, you know, postpone, postpone and they still put out a functioning game for the most part. Yeah, so. the, I don't think that the complaints about Last of Us Two were was ever that it the wasn't functionality. functionality. It was on the different, <laughs> on the set, top, other side of the spectrum type of thing. But um, yeah, I guess again at the end of the day, I too am just hoping for uh, honestly uh, again, if if the core gameplay mechanics are fun. I don't care if you have to take a step down from the career mode from the you know what are the, the 2k originals or whatever if you have to take a step back or even two steps back from that to have the gameplay be the best that it can absolutely be i am all for it that should be your main priority and then comes in the gm mode and then comes in the create a story mode because when you say a wrestling game that is just that it's two people wrestling and if that part of it is not functioning correctly it's not much of a game and i don't think delayed release of features is going to piss anybody off too terribly as long as the initial release of the game again is satisfactory. Yeah, exactly. So, I don't know. We'll see. We might get something sooner than SummerSlam. We might get something at SummerSlam. We might get something later than SummerSlam. But I guess all we can really do is just take it as it comes. So, uh, there you go, guys. We just covered uh, all of our uh, thoughts on the recent teaser trailer of 2k22 let us know what you guys think in the comment section below and until next time anytime you're in doubt always remember and never forget just turn down the treble and crank up the bass we'll catch up with you guys next time